Now I'll quantify the differences in our techniques by showing four graphs. The first graph I want to look at is the horizontal velocity of the shoulders. The quantity on the y-axis is velocity and the quantity on the x-axis is time. If the velocity is positive, our shoulders are moving towards the stern. And if the velocity is negative, our shoulders are moving towards the bow. This graph doesn't take into consideration any vertical movement of our shoulders. The red line on the graph is the velocity of the stroke man in the British boat. The blue line is the velocity of John's shoulders and the green line is the velocity of my shoulders. I only tracked one of the British rowers because they are both identical. The graph starts at the finish and tracks one full stroke ending at the finish. You can see that all of us have pretty much the same speed of shoulders during the recovery. The difference between us and the Britons occurs just as the end of the blades touch the water at the catch. The Britain's shoulders keep moving toward the stern as the blade is buried, as indicated by positive velocities for the red line, while our shoulders have already changed direction and started moving towards the bow, as you can see by the green and blue lines having negative velocity. Remember that if the body is moving towards the stern, then the boat is reacting by moving towards the bow. So moving towards the stern while the blades enter the water help to reduce boat check. You can also see that the velocity of the Britain's shoulders during the drive is in general faster towards the bow than ours because the red line has larger negative values. The next graph shows the path of our hands relative to the boat during one full stroke. The red line is the strokeman of the Britons. My hands are shown in green and John's in blue. Starting at the finish, you can see that the Britons and I both tap our hands vertically down to extract the blade but it doesn't appear that John does this, although he is somehow able to get the blade out of the water pretty cleanly. During the recovery, the Britons dip their hands down in order to square the blade early. Neither John nor I do this. At the catch, you can really see how much my hands dip down vertically by looking at the green line. John's also dip, but not as much as mine, while the Britons' hands, shown in red, stay perfectly level before they drop the blade in the water. You can imagine the wasted time for us to be moving our hands down like this. During the drive, we all pretty, we're all pretty similar, except that the Britons pull their hands in higher toward the finish. This could be because their rig is higher than ours. The next graph shows the vertical position of our shoulders as a function of time. So this is just the up and down motion of the shoulders throughout the stroke. We can see that the Britain's shoulders shown here in red start higher at the finish than ours do. This could be because they are sitting up taller, or it could be that their seats are positioned higher in the boat. Then the Britain's shoulders rise linearly as they swing out a bow and establish their body angle early in the stroke. We somehow dip our shoulders after coming out of bow and then establish our body angle. I think this dip is because of lack of low back strength and stability. By the time we get to the catch, our shoulders have dipped down again while the Britain's shoulders have remained high. During the drive, we, as we open up, both ours and the Britain's shoulders rise as expected. This graph shows the track of our hips with respect to the boat. So this shows the leg drive. Since time is on the y-axis for this graph and the position of the hips is on the x-axis, the inverse of the slope of the lines gives the speed of the leg drive. All of our leg drives are pretty similar. The speed of the hips is faster during the drive than the recovery as expected and is shown here by a less steep line for the drive compared to the recovery. The only noticeable difference between John and mine and my curves and the Britain's curve is the amount of time spent holding the legs down at the finish. Notice that the Britain's red line remains vertical for much longer than John's or mine. This indicates no motion of the hips, i.e. holding down the legs. This concludes the analysis of John's and my technique in comparison to the Britons. My recommendations for us are keep the head on top of the shoulders at the finish, hold the legs down as the arms and body swing away, establish the body angle sooner during the recovery, hold the body angle for the entire top quarter of the slide on recovery and drive, don't dip the shoulders or hands at the catch, and put the blades in the water as part of the recovery. John's been telling me this for years and I just don't seem to get it. Thanks for listening. If you have any feedback, feel free to contact me.